All right, let me get everyone's attention in three, two, one. All right, um, hopefully the class is quiet, people can hear me. Um, so sorry I'm not there with you today. This is your first time having a substitute in my class. And as I explained yesterday, um, most of today's lesson will be in the form of this video. And the expectation in my class is even when I'm not there and you have a substitute with you, um, I expect you to learn and do just as much in my class as you would if I were there. And I also have kind of a higher expectation of how well you focus and listen and stay quiet during the times that I'm teaching, because when I'm there, if someone's talking out of turn or the room gets a little bit loud, I can stop, I can wait, I can repeat myself to make sure people are able to hear the things that I say. But when I'm teaching via a video like this, I can't really do that, right? And so you got to make the best choice for yourself in terms of like, okay, I'm going to I'm going to listen to everything Mr. Thomas says, because he's only going to say it once. Uh, and I'm also going to make it possible for others around me to be able to do the same thing. Um, my hope is that the video portion of this class period takes about half the period. And then you'll have um, the other half of the period to work on some things that you got to work on. Okay, so uh, let's get to it and see if that's how it goes. So uh, we're going to enter a new topic. We're going to start talking about percents or percentages uh, is how some people say it. And I want to start by just literally talking about the word percent or percents. So I'm going to write it out here. Oh, let me get my document camera going now. All right. So percents. Let's break it up into two parts. We got per cent. All right, that's not literally how you write it. I'm I'm breaking it up into two pieces. And I want you to take a moment quietly just to yourself to think if someone asked you how to define or explain just the word per, what would you say to that person? So per is sort of a weird, difficult word to like describe or explain or define. Um, but usually when I ask this question, some things that students say are like, uh, it means for every, right? To have five of this per three of that means to have five of this for every three of that. Um, similarly in class, I tell you that mathematically you could think of it as divided by. That helps a lot, especially with like calculations and stuff. Um, for each is another one you hear. Out of is one that people say a lot, right? Three out of five, three per five. Okay. And you might've had some other ideas too, but those are the ones that tend to come up com uh, pretty commonly. Now let's think about scent. Take a second, think to yourself silently, where are some other words that you've that you see C E N T in. So maybe you thought of the word century, which means a hundred years, right? A hundred years. Maybe you thought of sense because there's a hundred of those in a dollar. Maybe you thought of centennial. That's a celebration people have once every hundred years. Maybe you thought of centipede, which supposedly have a hundred feet, but I don't, I don't actually think that's, that's the case. There's other examples as well. Words that have C-E-N-T in them, most of them, they're referring to the number 100. There's something about them that uh, is connected to the number 100. And so cent, you could literally just kind of think means 100. And so percent means for every 100 or divided by 100 or for each 100 or out of 100. Now let's look at the percent symbol itself. You might not have ever really thought about it, but it's literally made up of a one, two zeros making a hundred with a division built in. Look, it's a one, right? But it's just kind of slanted. It's leaning two zeros. And see how it sort of almost like makes a fraction with a zero and a zero on top, which isn't really a valid fraction, but fractions mean division, right? 
So there's like these hints of division and the number 100 like built into the symbol itself. But the thing about this symbol is that it's used to display an idea or information. The reason we use percents is because the human brain is really good at thinking of stuff out of 100. If I tell you 63 out of 100 or 63%, you're like, okay, I know about where that is. It's more than half, but not quite three fourths. Um, if I tell you 12%, you know that that's pretty low. That's toward the low end. And so our brains are really smart and fast about thinking about 100s, just like they are with 10s and thousands are probably another good one. But 100s are nice because they give us more opportunity for detail. Like 92 out of 100 is easier to say than 9.2 out of 10. Um, but it's not so much like a thousand. So 100, 100 is just like this real nice number for uh, quickly relaying like ratio information to someone. But this symbol that means out of 100 or percent is not like really a math operator. It doesn't go in our calculations ever. Like you, you don't really ever see, I don't know, 89% divided by four like we we wouldn't do that um i mean i'm sure some people do but it's not uh it's not conventional it's not the way people are meant to do it instead when we're going to do some math with percents i'm going to ask you to look at two numbers and tell me what percent is this one compared to that one or i might give you a number and a percent and say find 32 percent of 812 or something like that well when we're doing those questions some of the information might be relayed as a percent, or I might expect you to give me your answer as a percent, but the calculations in the middle that go from question to answer will always be done either as a decimal or a fraction every single time. And so before we even start working on being able to answer some of those questions, we have to get really good at like swiftly moving back and forth from percent to fraction percent to decimal, decimal to fraction, decimal to percent, fraction, decimal, percent, and back and forth is where we're going to start for at least a few days before we even start looking at trying to actually like answer some questions with percents. And so that's what these notes right here are all about that you should have picked up on your way in the door. Um, we're just going to like take a little bit of notes and do an example of how to do the various conversions from fraction to decimal to percent back and forth. And um um, then this will be something you keep, uh, put it in a folder, put it in your backpack. I meant to have it three hole punch, but it didn't for whatever reason. So if you want to three hole punch it, the three hole punches are on top of the Chromebook card, but you keep this. All right. And so the first one says to convert fractions to decimals, you can get the denominator to, in this case, it's going to be a 100. Sometimes it could be 10. Sometimes it could be a hundred. Sometimes it could be a thousand. Um, we call these the powers of 10. But in this case, looking at the example, we want to get this uh, denominator to 100 and then apply the proper place value. What does that mean to apply the proper place value? That's a little weird. I'll show you what I mean. So let's do step one. Let's get the denominator to 100 by multiplying the top of this fraction and the bottom of this fraction by five. And that's going to give me 35 hundredths. Okay, so we've got 35%. 35 hundredths and 35% literally mean the exact same thing. But we don't... I feel like this is a little bit blurry. What happens if I hit focus? Does that help? Maybe I should zoom in a little bit too. There we go. That's better. So apply the proper place value. Well, the place value is all based on the fact that these are hundredths. Now think about your place values right now, your, your decimal digit places I'm going to write up here. If I put a decimal point here, this first place value or decimal place is the tenths. And then you've got the hundredths. And then you've got the thousandths and the ten thousandths and so forth, right? Well, we want the hundredths. But what does it mean to put 35 in the hundredths place? It means that the five, the final digit in your number, that needs to wind up in the hundredths place. So we just write this as a decimal, 0.35, where the five wound up in the decimal place. That's the same as 35 hundredths. All right, there's your, there's one strategy for uh, fraction to decimal conversion. 
Another strategy is to just use long division. This marker's dying a little bit. I'm going to switch. And there's this little stupid thing that I tell myself to help myself remember something that students mess, all, mess up all the time is when they're trying to divide a fraction using long division, they're like, wait, which number goes in the little box and which one goes outside? I always think of these things that you might've seen them like on cereal boxes, granola bar boxes, that sort of thing. They're called box tops. I just say to myself, box top, because box top is a way for me to remember that the number on top goes in the box. So for example, if I'm going to try to long divide five eighths, I'm going to remember that five goes in the box, top box or box top and eight goes on the outside. And now let's do a quick review of long division. I'm gonna check how many times does eight go into five? It goes in zero times. So I'm gonna put a zero. And now I need to expand my representation of the number five into like 5.0, 5.00, et cetera, so that I have more place values to work with. But as soon as I add this decimal point to my five point, whatever, I'm gonna put that same decimal point straight up above so I don't lose it. So now I know my answer is gonna be zero point something. And now I can add a zero here. And now the question becomes, how many times is eight going to 50? Well, I know that six times eight is 48 and anything more than that would be too much. So I'm gonna put a six. Now I multiply through six times eight is 48. I'll line these digits up just like this. I don't really need to worry about a decimal point here. I'm just thinking of it as 50 divided by 48 at this point. And I have two left over, really two tenths. Two. So essentially what I've done is I've divided out 4.8 so far. And I still have these two tenths that have to get divided by eight. Well, I can't really put eight into two. So we expand 5.0 to 5.00, bring down that zero. And now the question becomes how many times is eight going to 20? Two times because two times eight is 16. So we'll multiply through now. Two times eight is 16. We get our remainder, which is four. And now eight doesn't go into four, but we can bring down one more zero. And I think this is gonna end it for us here. Because eight goes into 40 a nice five times. And so here's our decimal answer right here. Uh, five eighths is equivalent to 0.625. Okay, so there's there's your two strategies for going fraction to decimal. And we'll we'll probably have we'll come up with more strategies and we'll practice this a lot. And lots of times also I'll just ask you to use a calculator. All right. Uh next we're gonna convert fractions to percents, which sometimes just has the middle step of going to decimal first. So the first one says get the denominator to blank. So Again, your strategy here could be to get the denominator to anything like 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, any of these powers of 10, we call them. But in this case, I look at the example and I think my strategy is gonna to be to get this denominator to 100. Then the numerator is the percent because percent is out of 100. Oh, well, this, this example was specifically meant to be an easy one where the denominator is 100. So, uh, if I want this denominator to be 100, I've got 24, 25 at the bottom. I'm going to multiply by 4, which means i got to do the same thing to the top. I'm going to multiply that by 4 as well. So 25 times 4 is 100. That was the whole point to get that bottom number to 100. And then 11 times 4 is 44. So what I have is 44 hundredths. But I want you to really like cement it in your mind that hundredths, and percents literally mean the same thing. It's like you're saying the same word when you say that. And so saying 44 hundredths is literally the exact same thing as saying 44 percent. All right, the second strategy that we've got on this note sheet is to convert the fraction to a decimal first and then move the decimal place to decimal point two places to the right to get the percent. So let's talk about that second step after we do the first. Convert it to a decimal. Okay, so this is nine tenths. And so that just means if when I write this as a decimal, the nine has to wind up in the tenths place, which is the first spot to the right of the decimal, right? So nine tenths is 0.9. Now it says move the decimal point two places to the right to get the percent. Now let's see why that works. If I take this decimal point 
and I go, whoop, and I skip it over to one space. So now it's on the other side of the nine. That would make the number nine, but it says you go two spaces. So I'm going to go one more. Whoop. And now I've created this like empty open space there that has to be filled with a zero. So I'm going to fill that right here like this. And the decimal point is here on the right side of the zero. So what I've created is the number 90. I've turned 0. 0.9 into 90. But it says this is how you get the percent. And so what I'm saying is that 0. 0.9 is equal to 90%. And here's the way I want you to think of it. This symbol right here, the percent symbol, literally means hundreds also literally means divided by 100, whichever way of the, those you want to think about in the moment. And so what we're saying here is that 0. 0.9 is the same as 90 hundredths, which if you're really good at fractions and decimals, you can see that immediately. But another way to think about it is I'm saying 0. 0.9 is equal to 90 divided by 100. You could literally read the percent symbol as saying divided by 100. And now if you're good at your division, and you know that multiplying by 100 makes the decimal point go two spaces, one, two, like we just did. Well, then dividing by 100 makes the decimal point go one, two in that direction. And so if you take this 90 and you were to take that decimal point and go one, two to the left, it would return back to where we started from. And so that's that's where the equivalency is built in. Like, oh, I can take the decimal point and move it two spaces here, one, two. But as long as I put that percent symbol on there, then that sort of implies that it would go back one, two to where it came from. All right, uh, let's turn the page. So we're gonna convert decimals to fractions now. Uh, the first strategy listed here is find the blank of the last digit in the decimal, put the number without the decimal over that place value. So. Uh, that actually kind of gives away the answer there. Uh, find the place value of the last digit in the decimal. Okay, so let's look at this decimal here, 0.24 or 0 0.24, whatever. Okay, this two right here is in the tenths position. And the four is in the hundredths position. Okay, so this could be read as 24 hundredths. In fact, many of you probably had elementary school teachers that would force you to say this decimal as 24 hundredths instead of just saying 0.24. So since the four is in the hundredth spot, I can read this as 24 hundredths, meaning it can be written as the fraction 24 hundredths. And then we will probably be doing a lot of simplification uh, in this unit. Like when we're turning stuff into fractions, we probably wanna work with the simple ones. So uh, let's do that real quick. When I wanna simplify a fraction, I look for a number that can evenly, when I say evenly, I mean divide to a whole number, both the top and bottom of the fraction, the numerator and the denominator. And so immediately I see that both numbers are even, 24 is even, 100 is even, meaning they can both be divided by two and the quotient will be a whole number. So I can do that. And some of you are probably thinking right now, ah, but I knew a better number you could have divided top and bottom by, that's great. I like to, I like to just go with the smallest numbers first, but if you knew a faster way, good job for you. So 24 divided by two is 12. And 100 divided by 2 is 50. So we got 12 fiftieths. And now again, I notice that both numbers are even. 12 is even and 50 is even. So I can divide by 2 on top and bottom again. And I get 6 20 fifths. Now, some of you probably saw before I even started dividing by 2 the first time that 24 one hundredths could be divided by 4. And you would have got to 6 20 fifths in one step instead of 2. That's great. All right, um, how about you take a second and see if you could do the same thing to 1.3. Can you turn it into a decimal using this same fraction? And I'm just gonna sit here for 30 seconds to give you an opportunity to do it and then you can check your work against mine.
Okay, so in case there's talking out there, let me wait three, two, one. All right, so uh, the three, the last number is in the tenths place. So the denominator I'm gonna wind up using here is tenths. So let me just start by writing tenths. And then in the instructions here, it says, put the number without the decimal over the place value. So the number I have here is like 13. Even though it has a decimal point in it, I'm gonna ignore the decimal point when I go to put it over tenths. And so 13 tenths is the same as 1.3, right? Cause this is equal to one whole and three tenths left over. All right, next let's move on to convert decimals to percents. Take the decimal point and move it two places to the right. This is arguably the, the easiest one we have to do here. It's literally just move the decimal point. Um, so decimals to percents, I'm gonna take this decimal point here and go one, two. And so 0.92 becomes 92%. For the reasons that I was just explaining a moment ago, I think I kind of already showed this a little bit. Now, if you have a number that is greater than one whole, then you're going to wind up with a percent that's greater than 100%. 100% and one whole are equal to each other. So if you're over one, then you're over 100%. If you're over 100%, you're over one. So this is going to be after we move this decimal point two spaces and it winds up on the other side of that second one, this is 131%. All right, and our last step on this here is going to be, uh, we're gonna convert percents to fractions. So the percent symbol literally means divided by 100 or hundredths or out of 100. And so you can turn any percent into a, fraction just by putting that number over 100 as your denominator. 18% is the same as 18 hundredths. And we would normally simplify this. Um, I'm looking to get to the end of this video here pretty soon. So I, I'm not going to simplify this one. If you want to take a moment and do it, you can. Um, oh, wait, no, I, I just realized we have one last thing down here. So to convert percents to decimals, it's just, it's the opposite of this decimals to percents, we had to move the the decimal uh, decimal point two spaces to the right. Well, now essentially we want to get rid of this percent symbol and turn it back into a decimal. And so we just slide that decimal point back to where it came from, two spaces to the left now. So 36%, when I write the number 36, I don't write the decimal point, but it's it's living here on the right side of the six. And I'm going to move it two spaces one, two, so now it's in front of the three. So 36% is the same as 0.36. 405, when I just write the number without the percent symbol, the decimal point is living right here behind the five, but I wanna move it two spaces, one, two, I wind up with 4.05. So 405% is the same as having like four whole of something and an extra 0.05. All right, so here's what you're gonna do for the rest of the period. You've got this sheet that's attached to the back of this packet. This thing is your homework. All right, this, this front and back, but you, but you have time to work on it in class today if you want. And also you can use a calculator for some of them if, if, you, if you want to, so um, shouldn't be too bad. So for the rest of the period, this is this is what I think you should be doing. You've got multiple options, and I want you to kind of do them in order of priority, what you what you know you need to get done, and just make sure that you're staying busy and doing the right thing for the rest of the period. So I would say top priority number one should be um, test corrections if you didn't get a chance to finish that yesterday. Because um, remember, if you want to take the retake for either part of the um, – the test from last week, either the Desmos part or the performance task written part, um, you got to have that version of that test like fully corrected out before you come to retake the retake. So get those done. Um, the performance tasks should be somewhere up in the front of the room. Uh, remember, you can't leave with those though. So like you can work on it here in class, but then that needs to get back into the same stack for your period um, before you leave. Please don't leave with those performance tasks. Okay, and then I would say um, priority number two uh, would be sort of a tie between 
um, doing the paint mixing challenge if, uh, from yesterday. If you haven't finished that, it's worth extra credit how points uh, or this homework that I'm currently writing on, get, getting this done. Um, for third period, this will be due tomorrow. I know that's kind of tough the way it kind of worked out. Um, and then for second, fourth, sixth, it'll be due on Friday. And then um, lastly, uh, if, if you're done with all these things, these things and just need another thing to do, look in your Desmos account. And I assigned a Desmos online called um, three, three Turtles. And it's kind of like a fun one and you get to like race these turtles or whatever. And so I thought it was something that you could just sort of pass your time doing if you'd like. All right. Um, I hope you have a productive rest of the period and I will see you tomorrow.